Hi, everybody. Matt Bernier joined by Woodbine analyst Jeff Bratt taking a look at the Saturday Woodbine play of the day. And it also happens to be the Saturday DRF race of the day. You can head on over to the race of the day page on DRF.com and download free formulator pass performances for the eighth race at Woodbine. Happens to be the grade one Woodbine mile. Jeff, it's a fantastic race. There's a field of nine signed on. And again, folks, head on over to that race of the day page. Get your free formulator pass performances. Jeff and I are going to go through this field a little bit and discuss some of the key contenders. I think first things first, Jeff, when we talk about any of these races, we need to discuss the pace. Doesn't look like there's a heck of a lot signed on in here. I wonder if sort of the key component of the pace is the number seven Oscar performance. What do you do with him on the heels of an effort in the Arlington Million where he was eased? And he was kind of on the fence for the longest time. Was he coming for this race? Was he not coming? And eventually they did enter, which is great. Um, in terms of how you handled that last race, boy, I don't know. I mean, he was so good going into that event, sent off as the favorites. He should be right there in the mix of things early on. You've got Last Sardon, who I think will be part of the pace scenario as well. Lord Glitters, maybe, but I don't think it's going to be a really quick pace in this race. And uh, because of that, if you like you know, a horse that you think is going to be coming from way off the pace, they might be compromised a little bit in here. But um, the one thing that I find interesting is the fact that two of the major preps for this race, the Play the King being one of them and the Four Star Dave being the other, both competed over very giving turf courses. There is a chance for rain on the weekend, but I think we're going to have a firm turf course coming up at Woodbine. And this is a nice way to segue into the Play the King, one of the local preps for the Woodbine Mile. And there is the local hope for everyone up there in the Toronto area, the Canada area. Mr. Haverkamp, the number five horse, he goes out for Catherine Day Phillips. We're taking a look at the stretch run here. Jeff, this is a horse that he's four for four at Woodbine. He has done spectacular work up there. The question I have for you, it feels like when he has been tested, he hasn't quite passed the test. Do you think there's a scenario where he changes that and gets it done on Saturday? I think the big thing that helps him is home field advantage. I, I really think that's the the thing that will move him up a little bit. He is four for four on the EP Taylor turf course, but you put the nail on the head. You know, when he's been asked to face tougher, he has been able to pass the test. They've been pointing him towards this race all season long. Uh, he has to step up his game. There is little doubt about that. Of course, his daddy won this race not all that long ago, that being court vision. So that would kind of be a cool story. He's a fan favorite. I hope he runs well, but from a wagering point of view, I've left him off my tickets. Let's talk about the European invaders. There are two of them, the number six, Lord Glitters, the number nine, Stormy Antarctic. Stormy Antarctic, this is a horse that has won group stakes in Great Britain, France, and Germany. So you know that the travel isn't going to be an issue for him. <laughs> I think the only sort of concern or question that I have, and I'm curious your thoughts, I just don't know how good he actually is. Does he actually class up to this level? No, that's a legit question. And, I mean, he gets on to Lasix, uh, which I, obviously a lot of the European horses get onto when they come over to North America. Just reading some of the press clippings, he's obviously a good traveler. As you can see, he's racing in Hong Kong. He's racing Great Britain, et cetera. Um, of the two Euros, I prefer the other one, that being Lord Glitters in this spot. Um, if you look back, too, with Stormy Atlantic, the one thing that I find very, very interesting is this horse back in 2017 ran in Hong Kong in the Champions Mile, a really difficult race. and only lost by about four and a half lengths. So he seems to be right there, but he can't break through for that big grade one or group one win as of yet. You brought up Lord Glitters. This is a five-year-old gelding, the big gray. He goes out for David O'Mara. David O'Mara has had success in this race in the past. He saddled Mondi Elise to a victory in the 2015 Woodbine Mile. He is a group winner most recently over at York. We know that the distance isn't a problem for him. He's been a little bit of a sort of kind of out-of-nowhere story this year. He's really turned the corner in his four most recent starts. He's only a half-length beaten for a group one over at Royal yep. Ascot. Overall thoughts on Ro uh, Lord Glitters? Big shot, and this barn I respect an absolute ton. For whatever reason, they used that race at York on August the 25th with Mondi Elise, and they've had success with that angle in the past. They're trying to do exactly the same thing here coming up on Saturday. The big thing, Matt, that I like about him is if you look at some of his replays, he's not trip to pen. He can show speed if the pace is slow. He can come from way off the pace if the pace is fast. That is going to be a huge asset for him. So of him and Stormy Atlantic, I do prefer Lord Glitters a little bit more because of his versatility. Now, you had brought up a couple of the key preps leading into this race, one being the local prep to play the king, the other one being the four-star Dave up at Saratoga. I know you are interested in one of the two horses exiting this race. We have Delta Prince as well as Divisadero. You're interested most in Delta Prince. So Delta Prince ran on plate day here at Woodbine and was able to pull off a nice victory in the King Eddie. Here in the four-star Dave, you know, he had every chance to get by Voodoo Song, who's a tough customer to get past, as we know at Saratoga. And I know that Voodoo Song came out of this race and had a bit of a subpar effort. 
But more than anything, to me, when watching this race, I just thought that Delta Prince, he struggled with it. Given going, he just simply could not quicken like he could on the firmer ground at Woodbine. If you just look at how his profile is coming into this race, Matt, he just seems to be getting better slowly but surely with every race. He's a bit of a slow learner. Hey, I was a bit of a slow learner in life, and so <laughs> I turned out okay. So uh, nothing wrong with that. And uh, obviously the pedigree is fantastic from the same family as Royal Delta. This would be a massive victory for these connections to, to get a grade one race on his resume. And I think it is very important to note that success that he has had at Woodbine already. You know that he can handle it. That stretch run up there goes on forever and a day. Some horses can handle it and some can't. We know that Delta Prince two starts back did. I will say about Divisadero, one other thing to mention, I I've always been a little bit sneaky with him saying, I don't want him to win one of these races. I just want him to run well enough because I think there's a chance that you get him back to Churchill Downs. That's where he's done his absolute yeah. best work. And guess what? The Breeders' Cup happens to be there in a few weeks. Who knows? Maybe Divisadero on Saturday. I think he's got a puncher's chance, but I think he's a bit of an outsider. You you like Delta Prince in here. I, I hate to sort of be the, the spoiler here, give out your pick for you. You like Delta Prince. Is there anyone else in this race that you're interested in? You just hit the nail on the head, Divisadero. I think he'll love this long E.P. Taylor turf course stretch. You look at how he finishes. I mean, imagine for the first time perhaps ever in his career, he has to work with just one turn, and he gets the longest stretch in North America to deal with. I like the fact the regular riders aboard. The only thing that worries me is the possible pace scenario. If they go a little bit too slow up front, does he have enough of a kick to really pass them all in here? I think for him to win, the pace has to be a little bit hotter than what we think. But you know what? A price play, I'll toss that one into the mix of things. And the pace could be a little bit of a concern for the horse that I'm picking as well. And curious your thoughts on the inside run of the number one Good Samaritan for Bill Mott. The blinkers come off. I've long maintained any of these stakes previews that we've done talking about this horse or any of the recaps we've done talking about Good Samaritan. I've said for a long time, I think he's a turf horse. And finally, we're going back to the grass with him. And I think it's something to keep in the back of your mind. One of his best races as a two-year-old and sort of yep. the race that put him on the stage was a giant effort in the summer stakes up at Woodbine at this one-turn mile. I just think he's an interesting horse in here. Who knows? Maybe he's just way off form. I think this is what he wants to do, but you brought up the pace. I am a little bit concerned that perhaps he's going to have too much to do down the lane. I have a love-hate relationship with this horse, <laughs> uh, to say the least. Um, with Good Samaritan, he, you know, when he won the the summer stakes here, I, it was a jaw-dropping performance. I saw, wow, this is a really, really nice horse. So I bet him in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. He had a tough trip on that day, and he finished a very respectable third. I chased him the entire way. And, of course, I jumped off the bandwagon when he ran the Jim Dandy and he wanted to add a huge, huge <laughs> number. Um, why is he here? Is he here because... They're saying, okay, at this point, we've realized now that his form has tailed off so much that he can no longer compete at a grade one level and against some of the top older horses. Or is he here because all along they have thought, you know what, he's probably better on turf and we tried to get that grade one win on the dirt and we just simply couldn't get it. The price is there, Matt. That's the thing. If you like this horse, you're going to get backed at a big, big number in here. The trainer obviously has had success in this race, winning it with Jerry. Um Third last year with On Value, who had a very troubled trip. You could be onto a live long shot in there, but you are pace dependent. His current form and pace are the major, major stepping stone. So just demand a price, as I know he will when handicapped in this race. You know, you bring up an interesting point. Why is he here? And there's there's a part of me, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I look at the connections, the owners and the trainer group, all the same connections of Yoshida. And I feel like it's almost like mm. they just chose to do a switch there. Once Yoshida went to the dirt and won that race up at Saratoga in the Woodward, I kind of feel like perhaps that opened up a door to send this horse back over to the turf because last thing they want to do is run them against one another. We'll find out one way or the other if that's the case or if he can still run at all. Um, Good Samaritan, a little bit interesting at a big number. The eighth race at Woodbine on Saturday. It is the Saturday Woodbine play of the day. It also happens to be the Saturday DRF race of the day. Again, you can get those free formulator pass performances over on drf.com on the race of the day page. Jeff, one last time, your pick here in this year's Woodbine Mile is? Delta Prince, long shot to Visadero. And I'm going to go Good Samaritan over Delta Prince in the eighth race at Woodbine. It's a great day, great day of racing up there. Stay tuned. Take a look at Jeff and Dawn all day on Saturday afternoon. Jeff, enjoy the day. Best of luck. And again, schedule post time for race number eight at Woodbine on Saturday, the grade one Woodbine mile, 448 Eastern. Good luck.